Have you ever wondered why is it that whenever you listen to someone explaining what Bitcoin is or you hear a definition of it, you have the feeling that you understand it, but at the same time you don't? Why is that? It is because it isn't until you understand the technical parts of it that you uh, put your knowledge to the next level and you understand the potential of it at the highest level. In the last video, we analyzed what blockchain is and some of the general characteristics of this technology. And I told you that in this following video series, you were going to be uh, understanding the technical part of uh, Bitcoin, what Bitcoin is under the hood. And I also want you to uh, get familiar to certain uh, terminology and uh, language that we speak in, in, in this environment for you to be able to communicate with people better and understand what we're talking about better in a better way, of course. Um, so that is what we're going to be uh, analyzing in the following videos. And before we get started with Bitcoin under the hood, uh, the technical parts of this, for which you are not required to have any technical knowledge before, I want you to clarify that. I want to also tell you something that I've learned from the one and only Andrea Santronopoulos, uh, which is something that is crucial for you to understand and be aware of. Whenever you listen to someone saying that blockchain is the underlying technology behind Bitcoin, I wouldn't say that that is incorrect, but I would say that that is incomplete because a block of chain blockchain is one of the fundamental technologies of Bitcoin together with consensus mechanisms, mechanism and proof of work and so on. Okay, you will learn that in these videos. But I want you to know that it's not a block of chain uh, that makes the whole technology behind Bitcoin uh, in a general in a general perspective. Okay, very very important. So let's get started with uh, putting your knowledge about Bitcoin to the next level. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to my channel. All right, so we know that in Bitcoin it's all about transactions. There are no coins that are jumping around uh, in the internet. It's all about transactions in, and it's all about messages because all the participants in the network, the nodes, they communicate with each other. They talk about, uh, they talk to each other about what's going on in the system. For this reason, we can also say that Bitcoin is a language. Bitcoin is a network, it's a language, it's a protocol, and slowly you will learn why. Today, we're, you're learning that the, there's all about transactions, messages, and Bitcoin is also a language. Okay, so from the moment I want to send money to someone else, that transaction becomes a, an un, unspent output transaction. Okay, and that information, transaction, and that information is broadcasted to all the participants in the network that there is a transaction that has to be validated, that has to be confirmed. And in the process through that until it's confirmed, together with all the other transactions that a miner picks uh, to put in a block and that block is mined and added in a block of chain, in this process many things happen. Many things happen that you will start learning in this video, okay? So the first thing that we're going to learn about transactions is that in order to, for people to know that I am the authentic owner of the money that I want to send to someone else, that, that, that I am the owner, uh, we need to sign something that is called, that I'm sure you have already heard before, a digital signature signature for which we need two keys and I'm sure you have already heard this before but stay with me because I'm sure you will learn something else in this video you have a pri private key and a public key they go always together they all always go together so we need to sign the message in order to make people, the other notes, know that I am the authentic owner of that money that I want to send to someone else. For that, I need a private key. With the private key, I sign the message. And the private key, as you know, you don't share it with anybody else. You are the only one who knows this information. 
meaning that you are the only one who can sign the message, but everybody can validate that information with your private key, your public key, okay? With the public key, everybody can validate and verify that it was you with your private key that signed the message, that signed the digital signature, okay? And a digital signature cannot be used Meaning, in all the transactions, in each transactions, you need another digital signature because the transaction cannot be spent twice, all right? So this is the first approach that I want you to understand about the digital signatures and private and public key. It is all about the math behind a digital signature that we are able to verify that it was me with my private key who signed the message uh, and everybody can validate th uh, that through the, pri the public key, okay? And everybody can uh, verify that information. Another way we can see private and public keys is the following. We can say the public keys are for deposits and they are like these send to addresses that you need to give people in order for them to send you money. And the private keys are for withdrawals and they are like your password that you need in order to get access to your funds. Each security is entirely your responsibility. If you lose your private key, you can forget about your funds. Uh, for this reason, we can say that Bitcoin is a system based on ownership. You own your money, you own your private key. This gives you power over your money, okay? Which is very, very powerful if you compare it to the financial system that we have today in place. If you compare it with a credit card, for example, I want you to think about this for a second, how much information it is exposed on the front and on the back side of a uh, credit, uh, credit card, okay? On the front, we have your name, your account number, expiration date, which can be your public key, and on the back side of it, you have your private key, which are these three little numbers, and your signature, okay? So for this reason, we can say that for sure, cryptocurrencies give us more security and privacy if we compare it to the financial system that we have in place, in place right now. The private part, um, we can discuss that topic later in a future video as well, uh, but for sure, this uh, system gives us more privacy and, and is more secure, okay? I hope you learned a lot uh, about this characteristic that each transaction that has to be confirmed uh, has, which is a digital signature, and you need to sign the signature in order for people to validate that I or you was, uh, that I was the uh, true owner of the money that I was sending, all right? I hope to see you in the next videos. I hope you subscribe because we're just getting started and there are mo many more uh, topics that I want you to understand in order to take your knowledge to the, to the next level, okay? See you in the next video.